In this video, we're going to talk about several different ways we can draw our hydrocarbons. So, so far we've been drawing what we call structural formulas. And these structural formulas basically are like Lewis structures that we drew back in chapter 7. We're showing all of the atoms and all of the bonds. So here down at the bottom is an example of a structural formula. It's what we've been doing so far this chapter. The next type of structure we can draw are called condensed structural formulas. Here these structures include all of the atoms in the order that they're bonded, but they do not show the actual bonds. So down here at the bottom is an example of a structural formula. Notice all of the car carbons are there, all of the hydrogens are there, but we don't use lines to show the bonds. And these two structures are representing the same molecule. So let's practice going between structural formulas and condensed structural formulas. So to go from the full structural formula to condensed, work your way kind of down the backbone of the chain, one carbon at a time. So if I start with the first carbon, it has three hydrogens, so we're going to say it's a CH3. The second carbon has two hydrogens, so it's a CH2. The third carbon only has one hydrogen, so it's, sorry, so it's going to be CH, but then it also has this CH3 group branched off of it. So that CH3 we will write, but we will put it in parentheses. So anytime you see something in parentheses, you know it's not part of the main backbone, it's branched off. So now back up to the main chain, and we're gonna look at this carbon. It has one hydrogen, and it also has a CH3 group branched off of it. So we'll put that in parentheses. Then the next carbon is a CH2, and the last carbon is a CH3. To go from the condensed formula to the full structural formula, again, look for your carbon. So here's my first carbon, and the hydrogens listed after it are attached to that carbon. So there's three. The next carbon has two hydrogens. The next carbon has one hydrogen. And then here's a group that's in parentheses, so it must be branched off. So we have a CH2, CH2, CH3. Back up to the main chain, we have a carbon with one hydrogen again. And then we have a CH3 group in parentheses, so that's branched off. Back up to the main chain, we'll end with a CH3. Always double check that your structures, all of the carbons have four bonds, and then you should have the right structure. The next option that we're going to look at are called line angle structures. And these are even simpler to draw once you know how to read them and what they're representing. So these structures only show the framework of the molecule. So we're actually not showing any letters, okay? We're just showing kind of the backbone, if you will. So we'll walk through the steps here in a second, but how this structural formula translates into this line angle. Here's the end of a line, so that's the carbon on the end. Here's a point, that's the next carbon, another point, next carbon, end of a line, last carbon. So let's kind of walk through the different pieces of a line angle structure. So all of the ends, as I mentioned, are carbon atoms. Anywhere you have a peak or a valley are also carbon atoms. Hydrogens aren't shown, but again, carbon always wants four bonds. So if I look at this first carbon on the end, it only has one bond drawn. So that means there must be three hydrogens attached to it. If I look at the next carbon, it has two bonds already shown. So there must be two hydrogens attached to it. Same with this one, there's two lines. So there's two hydrogens missing. And then on the other end, I only have one line. So there are three hydrogens missing. Here's a couple examples. 
of branches and double bonds. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six across the main chain. So here's the one, two, three, four, five, six in the line angle. On the third carbon over, I have a CH3. So here's the CH3 in the line angle. Fourth carbon over, I also have a CH3. That's on the end of that line. For double bonds, the only difference is in the line angle structure, you draw a second line, so it looks like a double bond. And this, these two examples show you the difference between cis and trans. So if I draw my line through the double bonds, I have a group on each side of that line, so that's trans. If I look at this double bond, both of my carbons are on the same side, so that is cis. And when we did cis and trans in an earlier video, I mentioned you want to look at the carbons because you wouldn't be able to see hydrogens. Here's where that is happening. For triple bonds, remember triple bonds are linear. So the triple bond carbons and then the carbon on either side, that was at 180 degrees. And line angle structures are trying to show shape at least a little bit. So when we draw a triple bond in line angle, you'll have the two carbons on either end of the triple bond, but then the next atom on either side is also in a straight line, again to have that 180 degrees. So there's not a bend indicating that there's a carbon at the end of the triple bonds. So don't let that trip you up. So here's some practice. We're going to go from the structural formula to the line angle structure. And it also asks for the condensed, just for a little extra practice. So the first example on the left, let's do condensed first. So we have CH3, then we have CH2. The next carbon over has one hydrogen, and then it has the CH2, CH3. We'll put that in parentheses. Next carbon over has one hydrogen, and then the CH3 group coming off of it in parentheses. And then back to the main chain is a CH3. So there's your condensed structure. Line angle, again, I wanna look at my main backbone. So I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So I'm gonna draw my angle. Remember when you put your pen down, the end of that line is one. So one, two, three, four, five. The third carbon over is where that CH2 group is. So here's my third carbon over. So I got one, two. So there's the two carbons of the group coming off. Then the fourth carbon over has one. So the end of that line is the CH3. So there's your line angle for the structure on the left. Pause the video and give a shot at the structure on the right. Again, drawing the condensed and the line angle. All right, condensed structure. We have a CH3 followed by a CH2. Then the next carbon has one hydrogen and then we've got a CH2, CH3 branched off of it. Back on the main chain, we have a CH2. Next carbon is a CH with a CH3 branched off. I'm gonna have to go down to a second line here. Then we have another CH3. So there's your condensed structure. For line angle, my main backbone is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So if I draw that in my zigzag, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Then the third carbon over, I have two carbons coming off of it. So that's this carbon right here. Now I'm gonna draw this down just because you usually draw off of the peak, not into it. So if it's pointing down, you draw down. If it's pointing up, you draw up. Again, you're not gonna be drawing these for me. You're gonna be reading them for multiple choice type questions. So don't be overly concerned about that. What's important is that it's on the right carbon. Then we have a CH3 group second from the right. So that's this carbon and there's the CH3 group. So your line angle structure should look something like that. Here's a couple more. This time we have double and triple bonds. So go ahead, pause your video and see if you can come up with condensed structures and line angle structures for both of these. All right, the one on the left, we're starting with the CH3. 
next carbon in the main chain has no hydrogens, but it does have the CH3 branched off of it, so I'll put that in parentheses. Next carbon has a CH, and the last carbon has a CH3. So notice there's no double bond actually indicated in the condensed structure. The way you know that there's a double bond there is if we went the other direction, and I tried to draw this out, I'd have a C with three hydrogens. The next C only has that CH3 on it, then the next C has one H on it, and then there's a CH3. And if I go back and check, these two carbons don't have four bonds. They both only have three. So there must be a double bond missing. So if you're going from condensed to full structure or trying to decide if there's double or single bonds, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is check your formula. So we have one, two, three, four, five carbons, so C5. And if you count your hydrogens, there are 10 of them. So that C5H10 tells you that there's a double bond in there. You do have to be a little careful with that though, because those general formulas only work when there's one double bond or one triple bond. All right, to draw this in line angle, we've got four carbons down our main chain. Second carbon over has the CH3, and then between carbons two and three is the double bond. For the triple bond, we have a CH3 followed by a CH2. The next two carbons have no hydrogens. That's where the triple bond is. The next carbon also doesn't have hydrogens, but it has two CH3 groups. So I can say CH3 times two, and then back to the main chain, there's another CH3. This CH3 could also be packaged in here, and instead of a two, that could be a three, and then you wouldn't add in the last CH3. You could do that if you wanted to. To draw a line angle, with triple bonds, I usually start with the triple bond, and then I know the carbons on either side have to be linear. So here's one, two, three, four carbons. So that's these four carbons right here. There's one more to the left, so I'm going to angle that off. You can go up or down, it doesn't matter. On the right, there's one more, so I'm going to angle that off. And then that fourth carbon that I have up there has two CH3 groups coming off of it, so I'll add in those two as well. So one way we can easily check if you're reading these line angle structures correctly is ask you to give us the chemical formula for the structure. So you need to count the carbons and the hydrogens in your structure. So for counting carbons, again, we need to find the end of the line and any peaks and valleys. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 10, 11, 12, 13 carbons. So we've got C13. Then if we go through and count hydrogens, the one on the far left currently has one bond. So it's missing three hydrogens. The next carbon over has two bonds, so it's missing two. Next one has two bonds, missing two. Next one, two. This one has one, two, three, so it's missing one hydrogen. Two here, two missing two, two missing two, and only shows one, so it's missing three. Up at the top, we have one bond, so we're missing three two bonds, missing two. Here we've got three bonds, so missing one. And then there's three there. So if you go through and count those, you should have 28 hydrogens. So the way I got 28 a lot faster than counting all the lines I just drew in is this is an alkane, so it has to be that 2N plus two general formula. But double check yourself and there are 28 hydrogens there. If we look at the next example, with triple bonds. Remember both ends of the triple where the three lines are are carbons. Then here's another carbon, two more, here's three more. So we've got eight carbons. If I use the general formula for an alkyne, we should have 2n minus 2, which would be 14 hydrogens. So let's go in and double check. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then the 14th is up here on the end. So this triple bond is on the end of the molecule, so you can't forget about that hydrogen that's coming off because it only has three bonds. So C8H14. Go ahead and see if you can figure out the formulas for these last two examples. 
All right, for this one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So we should have C8. This time it is an alkene with a double bond, so it should just be 2N, meaning there should be 16 hydrogens. So I'll show you where those are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, what did I count wrong? Oh, there's not three up here. I'm sorry. There's only two on that carbon. So there's number 16. All right. Then this last example, we have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carbons. So we've got C9. Now we can't use our general formula because there's two double bonds. All right, so we will have to go in and count our hydrogens. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So C9, H16. Now make sure you agree with my count there and you know why I put two hydrogens on this carbon, for example, and none on the carbon there. All right, the other thing this problem asks you to do is for the alkenes, decide if they are cis or trans. So if I go back to this first alkene, draw my line through, notice my carbons are on opposite sides, so that is trans. If I look at this last example, there's two double bonds, and you have to look at each of them individually. So I'll look at this one first, and in this example, the carbons are on op or sorry, the same side, so that is cis. If I look at this other example, I have carbons on the same side, but then I also have one up here. So this carbon of the double bond has two carbons attached to it, which makes it neither. So here's kind of a good summary of what we've done so far in this chapter. We have our three different types of hydrocarbons. We have alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. We have our single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds. The general formula for each, a summary of what the geometry is, and then saturated versus unsaturated. Here's a summary for your boiling points, and then the three different ways we can now draw our hydrocarbons.